Good evening, friends, on this Thursday, the very last Thursday of our September month in 2021. And welcome, uh, we welcome you in the name of the wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So friends, this evening we welcome you with such excitement and also an opportunity for learning as we talk about pre and post metric exam support, which is required, uh, which is a required responsibility from parents. So friends, call everyone, everybody who has a child, call them call them we need to talk and say to them we need to talk so friends as you are calling everybody and anybody in your circle may i please request that we bow our heads and invoke the spirit of god in prayer we give you all the honor and all the grace we acknowledge you as our creator, parents, Lord God, thanking you that you are here today. Lord, as we usher our children pre their ex final examination in metric, we ask that you give us the spirit of wisdom, that we are able to give them the guidance and the support that is required as they enter into this journey. Lord, we ask that you make us the parents that we were made and created to be. Lord, we also ask that as we journey into this conversation, that you make us the parents that we are made to be post their examination. That whatever the outcome is from the examination process, Lord, that we become their parents before anybody else. That we be don't become their judges, that we don't become their friends we don't become the enemies, Lord, but we become the enemy. Heavenly Father, I bring all the parents to the foot of your throne, Lord, asking you for your grace, that they know that they're doing all that they can. Those that are not doing all that they can, I pray, Lord, that they do all that they can as of this very moment that they trust in their children, that they support their children, that they motivate their children as they go to what's metric and into metric. Lord, I pray this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I bring your daughter, Mamu Biha Kula, to the foot of your throne. Lord, give her all the guidance. And we she somewhere alone. And to win your commission, I pray this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So, friends, we are in this is actually the last day of September and entering into the month of October, um, where our matriculants are journeying into Babege's Palenbook, Bakabele's Palenbook, as the Cossas would say. So we are going to enter into this conversation with our very own Mamu Biha Kula as she talks to us about pre and post metric exam uh, support requires responsible parenting. And she's going to tell us about what it means to be a responsible parent at this very time and i know for a fact because it's i mean i'm an aunt but at this time right now i am money to matriculants and i'm nervous you know and i can only imagine what the parents to these kids are going through because i'm like oh, i need rehab mamu b welcome how are you doing Zelo? i'm fine thank you very much yes Layla. And how are you? Um, I'm very well. I thought you would be at uh, the Natal Coastal Triennial, but I was like, thank the Lord we have her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm here. And uh, let me just say, <laughs> just indicate that I don't have a child in metric now. 
they all finish. <laughs> so they invent my last one, even my last one is working. <laughs> So where is your last born now? Way. Excuse me, I, I missed that, Mama. Where is your last born now? He's working. He's employed. Ah, 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 ah. When are you a dad? You are dad. No stress for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that stress. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm actually grateful I've that we there. have you to tell us about that stress, but also about that responsibility of what it means to have a child in metric. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to talk to us about maybe children in metric and also being a parent, you know, what it meant for you because I know that you are a mother to boys. Um, how was that for you when they were in metric? And what kind of a support did you have to, to give to them um, when they were in metric? I think I must first just say uh, the parent, the child, the teacher, all three of them. When you talk metric and metric exam, everybody's under pressure. The teacher has done her or his best because it's a direct, you know, a result of her hard work or his hard work when the matriculants are doing well. The parent is has got expectations of her child or his child doing well. But the most important person in this equation is the learner, is the matriculant. Because no child would go through school and up to matric level and at that point study to fail. I'm using both because correctly tell you don't study if you want to fail. But there's no child who would study to fail. And this is something that I think we need to take to heart, both as teachers, but most importantly as parents. And therefore, at this time, it is important that we give our children as much support as possible. Fear alone can make people behave in an abnormal way. So this time, it's a combination of pressure of saying, you know what, I want to nail it. I must do my best. I must study hard. They've been studying, but they put more effort now because it's closer to results, to getting their results, their expectations. They want to live, uh, they've got expectations. They've applied, you know, uh, colleges, universities. They know what they want to do. And therefore, what is important is guidance and support. Support in the sense that I want to emphasize how you should treat your children equally because especially in our own culture in fact generally in in most household but mostly in our cultures african culture that we give girls more chores than boys when they come from school they are expected to do certain chores and this child now, other than the normal work that they used to be doing in terms of preparing their home, when doing their homeworks and other things, they've got, they have to put extra effort in preparing for their exams. And therefore, we need to contribute in them being calm, in them being relaxed, in them being focused. We also need to support them when we see that they are under pressure. Assurance and affirmation, it's one of the most important things that a parent can do. Because you've been observing your child throughout the year trying, but now it's at a time that they even some of them, they self-doubt. 
And therefore, aff affirmation is very important. That you know, my child, you've been doing so well. Nothing has changed. It's just an external exam. You've been doing so well during the year, passing your tests. So there's nothing is going to change. You are going to nail it. You are giving the child that reassurance and affirmation that she or he is going to make it. The other kind of support, because some of them, they will cross night and then during the day, they would want to sleep. So if you are a strict parent, you want your child to be early, in the morning to be up early. This has to change because you need to adapt and get to understand that this child now is got her own schedule and program and a certain way of studying because some of them, they're capable of cross nighting but during the day, they're not productive. It's like human beings. I'm an early bed person, you know. Three o'clock, early hours of the morning, I'm fresh, my mind, you know, I'm innovative, I'm very creative, you know. So I can spend my first five hours in the morning. Eight o'clock, I might want to do and relax, you know, and do other things, you know. So same thing as the children. They are exactly like that. So we need to understand that. The other element I want to raise is their safety. Because it is the time now they do study groups. You know, they have their study groups. And these study groups, they're not necessarily happening in the school environment. They might be in certain, you know, uh, uh, homes, families and all that. It is important as a responsible parent that you know who your child is studying with. They must be known. If they have to visit and fetch this, because it's it's across gender, it will be guys and, 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 and girls, you know. So you need to know who your child is mingling with. Because there's also another element of saying, we want to refresh. There's so many theories You say, for you to focus, you need to drink this, you need to take this. Some of them, they might be even introduced to drugs. And they might be hooked. Because, yes. They'll say, if you use marijuana, you, you, you'll be more brilliant than ever before. Those are, are those theories. There might be other things that they may think, you know, for you to, to, you know, to have the energy that you need to cross night, you know, or do 24 hours, you know, studies. You need to take this and all that. As a parent, you need to get close to your child and understand, you know, what is a child? What are the changes, you know, in his or her behavior during this period? And be there to give the necessary support. You know, uh, even today, I appreciate the role that my dad played in our, you know, when we're studying. Especially when we're at varsity, I'll, I'll just highlight that. We used to come home. It was more comfortable coming home during the exams than staying at, at, at school, you know, because he was not studying, but he would sit and read his Bible because he was encouraging us to cross night, would bring our friends at home, you know, because we had that environment. He didn't, he wanted to give us, you know, that moral support. So he would study his Bibles, he'd prepare his things and all that. Everyone would be studying there. And in between, he'd be chatting to us and all that, and those things are that, you know, that moral support gave us, you know, that endurance of saying, okay, you know, we can do it. These are things that might not uh, be, uh, you might not think that they add value that, but if I can remember that now, when was that? You don't want to know, you know? So these are the things that are very important. If your child is studying in the room, please just pop in, buy some snacks, you know, and just give the child the support, you know, is everything going okay? Would you like some coffee? This and all that. So that you are part of this without giving her pressure and give that reassurance that it is okay you are going to be. This is the pre that I'm talking about. And the issue of their safety is very important. I think, uh, let me stop on that then. I would like to talk about post later on. Maybe we engage in this uh, pre-exam period because for me it is very 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 important that you get their mindset ready you get yeah. them emotionally ready 
You give them yeah. that support, the reassurance that when they step in there, it's no different to the exams that you wrote, the test you wrote during the year. So you just need the focus. You just need to become, because sometimes they sit there, you know, we've heard of people that black out during the exam. It's mm. because of the high pressure levels. You're most brilliant. When I was writing metric, one of the most brilliant guys failed and the principal could not understand. He wrote many letters, you know, because he couldn't understand how this guy could fail. Yeah. And the only logical explanation now, when I think of it, is the pressure, you know, they black out. It's even worse now with COVID-19 because now the exams are written online. Some of them, they can't even navigate. They, they get nervous of the, the gadgets that they have to use now because they're using <clears> to write to exams by hand. And now you have a time limit when you are doing online. If you, so you need to finish that exam within a short this space of time. You know, you are not writing, you, 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 you juggling with this gadget, you know, you get nervous, you know, so you might even forget what you know. So these are the things that we need to get our children ready, you know, and get them focused and help them relax most importantly, you know, with that reassurance. Let me stop there, uh, Sly, you know, then we can talk about the other part and yeah okay <laughs> thank you so much mamu b yo it's it's a lot it's a lot i know that i felt this way last year and you know just thinking about matriculants last year because no other matriculant had ever been in the situation that they found themselves in last year uh, because we had never had a COVID-19 pandemic or a situation that we find ourselves in. So this year, I'm so glad that in this platform, we are talking about it and dispelling some of the myths and also assisting everyone, assisting parents, assisting friends, assisting the students themselves um, in how they can, um, you know, be here and be free to, to be themselves as they reach towards their examinations. So here is the one thing, Mamubi, you, you, you spoke about so many things, but I'm thinking about the environment, the importance of the environment when someone is writing an exam. So the norm is that everybody goes into a school hall or the library hall or whatever hall there is, and they write in the presence of their peers. Now there is COVID-19. That is not the case, you know? So you might be writing next to someone you don't even know, you know, for all, for, for all there is. So how do we as children or how do students prepare their minds in terms of the environment? Because most of the time they, are be, they have been studying in the presence of their parents or, you know, maybe not. So how do I prepare my mind as a student, as a matriculant uh, prior to writing my exam? I think uh, it's not easy. But as I said, it's, an, uh, it's about the mindset. It's about reassurance. Because throughout the year, they've experienced this uh, process of writing their tests online. So, yes. And now there's nothing new. Maybe this time around, they'll have an opportunity to be in some form of a you know, classroom. Mm. But what is important is the focus. And hence I said, the conducive environment starts at home. I don't want to put this child or this learner in isolation. The mm. teachers have done what they're supposed to be doing in the school environment. But at home now, you need to create that conducive environment because the Preparation and planning is most important than the actual exam. So that this child, when she is planning her exams, 
she knows that it's okay, you know, to skip a question if you're not sure about. It's okay, yes, and move to the next. You don't have to finish everything. It's okay mm. to plan your 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 exam to say, I first read so that I understand. I don't jump and respond. It's better to take ten minutes to read the entire question paper, so that mm. I select the questions that I'm most comfortable with. So that out of that hundred, if I'm not able to answer all of them, at least I'm sure of the seventy percent that I've written. You know that I'm comfortable with. You know, so these are the things that, when I'm saying motivation, reassurance, affirmation, mm -hmm. you know, creating that conducive environment. It is very important. We don't have to know as parents the content, but of what our children are writing. Because one parent might say, I'm not a scientist, or I don't know maths, I don't understand Africans, and all. It's not about knowing. It's about the moral support that you are giving to that child. It's about the reassurance that you're giving that child because the teacher has done what she or he is supposed to be doing in terms of the content. Yours is to play that role of a responsible parent to say, my child, I understand that you are writing. So if you are used to coming home and preparing supper, this period, you are not going to do it. I'm going to serve you because I want you 100% focused in preparing for your exams. Yeah. If you need to I... take a nap, I'm with you. I'll support you. If you want to sleep and be woken up at 12, I will be part of that planning, of your planning, you know. Mm -hmm. These are mm -hmm. the things that we need to do as parents, as a responsible parent. But most importantly, if you are saying, I'm comfortable because I need the support of my peers because I'm not that good in science or maths, so-and-so is good, so we've decided to study as a group of five. So yes. I will spend, you know, this time with them in the evening. Hmm. You need to know that family. You need to get information, you know, to say, where is this? And who is this child, who is he studying, she studying, or he, both he and she, studying with? You need to know those people. Yeah. Hmm. There's Anna, when my middle son was writing exams, he was writing with a girl, you know, in, in the neighborhood. So they were studying together. <laughs> so the mother is telling me now, after they've matriculated, we're very close. She's saying, the way they were nervous, my son had to go and study with this girl <laughs> at their place. We knew that he was going there, but and, and it was after, but she was telling me that now these kids were studying in the room. <laughs> so, so as a mother, a responsible mother, she was so nervous. She said, you know, call her husband, say, we can't sleep. These children, they were studying. You make sure that they are studying and doing nothing else and studying. <laughs> <laughs> so she was ready to say, we kept on going to the room and offering this. We wanted to watch her. And if these kids are really studying, oh, it's a, you know, they are just pulling wool over our eyes and doing something else. So, so we always joke about it, you know. But it's being a responsible parent, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they needed each other. But as a parent, you don't know if that is the beginning and end of it, you know. So you need to be alert to these things. Don't laugh. It's true. <laughs> so, you know? so these are the things, you know. So that you need to understand and make sure that you're in that process of that support and making sure that your child get good mark, good marks. There's nothing else beyond that that will cripple mm -hmm. the whole, you know, this, uh, this this child in the process and and putting her in or him, or especially her, in a vulnerable mm -hmm. situation because she needs support, you know, from her peers. Yeah. So these are the things that you need to be alert to. Sure.
<laughs> I can I can only imagine, you know, and I, you know, my situation is a blessing, but also a curse at the same time because I'm married, but I don't have kids. So it's a blessing in that instance, but it's, it's a curse in a sense that I don't have to be dealing with what you guys are dealing with, you know, having to worry about is my child really studying or is he or she looking at um, they appear with a different eye. <laughs> I always say, I, I'm just, I don't think I was calmed. You know, I don't think I'm strong enough to be dealing with all of that. But Mama Hakula, do you think that trust between parents and children starts at metric? Or is this something that parents should start way before metric? No, it has to start way before metric way before metric you need to create that culture of uh within the family of being supporting to your child supporting your child it starts with more things somebody who's in great art who comes with one star at home that is that appreciated you know i still have exam results of for and and posters from great art i'm taking talking about children now no one no longer children we're young adults who are working but I've got files mm. of each of them because this is something I would like to take to their children, to my grandchildren, to say, you know what, this is how your father grew up and this is what he, he was able to do when he was growing up and all that. I've got those, you know, those are special treasures for me. So it starts with those things that you appreciate your child throughout her or his journey. It doesn't start in metric. But metric is highlighted in this instance because it's more like a transition from childhood to an adult, to being an, an adult. Because this is a child that is preparing her future now, getting to varsity, having to decide where, she's, when, where she wants to go or where he wants to go, what he wants to do and all that, which is the other part that I would like us to discuss. Because this is also something else that as parents, we actually frustrate our children. So they end up being frustrated. They become suicidal because we want to relive our lives to correct our mistakes with our children. If I wanted to be a doctor and now I couldn't do it, I want my child to be a doctor. Or if I'm a doctor, I want my child to be like me and be that doctor, you know. I say doc medicine runs in the family. No, it doesn't. They might have said me of your genes, but they've got their own life, you know, and their own ambitions, you know, to pursue. So these are the things that as you are preparing your child and the selecting subjects and where they want to go and applying this thing, you need to be cognizant of who they want to be as individuals, not a replica of you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. You know, on this very platform, I know that we had a conversation with a brother. God, please forgive me because I forgot his name right now. But we talked we talked about the same thing, that when does a child's career begin? And this young gentleman said, a child's career begins when they are born not when they get to metric. Because sometimes as parents, we think when my child is at metric, only then will I know what my child wants to become. But actually that's not the case because the case, the, the, the norm is that my child's um, career and dream and future starts when my child is young. You know, they show certain traits uh, in terms of what they want to be. Maybe at grade one, they are inclined to mathematics or to numbers. Uh, then you get to know, okay, this child might be inclined to mathematics or maybe accounting. Then you, you, know, you get to follow the child. And I like what you say when you say that sometimes that as parents, we want to live our lives vicariously through our children. But not only that, we want to rectify our own mistakes through our children. So now, what can we do as parents? What can you say? Because you've been there and you're still going through it as a parent to say, when can you say to a parent, ah, ah stop it, stop it. Because sometimes yes. I think we need to say to parents, stop it. 
I think the first thing is that you must understand that children are different. Yeah. So don't compare your child with any child, other child. Yeah. No, your neighbor's child is is got uh, you know her own path. Even yeah. your own children, you know, they are different. So don't compare your children because they're not the same. And these are the things that, um, as we bring up our, our children, we we can um, create some resentment between the children. If you continue to compare your children, you know, with my two boys, I've got three uh, children, young men. <laughs> so the two of them, I deliberately, because the first one was so assertive, known everywhere and all that when he started, you know, yeah, a, 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 when he started school, you know, he was achieving it. And, and so I deliberately, and when we we go anywhere, people would always uh, mistake the little one and call him by his brother's name, you know, you know, yeah. And, uh, and I could see that he was like, he, sort of call and said, my name is so-and-so, he will mention his own name. But I deliberately took the other one to another school to study now, yeah. So he didn't, he, he went to us and the other one, the other one was with at, at crew. So then I separated them deber deliberately because I wanted this one to, to create his own, you know, rapport in terms of his uh, performance, in terms of his recognition, you know, of what he's capable of doing, you know, at school and things like that. And that helped, you know, because he, he, no teacher, because also the teachers, they do that. There was no teacher that, that would actually compare him to his brother because his brother was not in the same school as him, you know. These are some of the things, I'm not saying everyone would do that, but for me, I did it deliberately because I could see that it could be a danger, you know, this one always living, being in the shadow of his elder brother, you know. So it's very important that as you bring up your children, you need to make sure that they, they grow as individuals and they have their own opportunity to create their own brand and identity, you know. That is very important. Sure. Yeah. Mm. No, thank you so much. I, I, and maybe I need to also come in, uh, Mamubi, to give a two cents worth of who I am and where I came from. I was born in a family of seven children, six girls and one boy. So already, you know, and this family was a traditional family where my father especially believed in tradition, that he was a staunch, a staunch traditionalist. But if there is one thing that I think I took out of the situation was that we were all treated as individuals. Yes, there were certain things that were communal uh, rules and morals, which um, were for everybody, but there were certain situations where they knew her Silalo is not gonna fit there. You know, whenever they were like big family gatherings, they knew they can't be, be they can't be putting me by the pots, you know, by the fire and situation. Uh -uh. <laughs> they knew it's just not me, you know, it's just not in my DNA. But they also knew that whenever they needed someone to fetch something, go buy something, drive somewhere, well Silalo is, is is that person. So so, you know, it's, I think I agree with you when you are saying that you need to identify who your children are, because they are not all the same person. They are different people. They just share the same um, clan name or surname. Uh, but as far as a character is concerned, they're all different people. So now I want us to talk about blockouts and blackouts and pressure metric just has a certain type of pressure that it brings to people even when they don't want it to you know it, it's almost like 
it's almost like you can't help it. You know, as a matriculant, you just can't help it. You just feel this pressure. Almost like I'm feeling with my studies now. I've been studying for a bit, but this only just this pressure. It's, so how do we assist these young people to deal with that particular pressure and blackout? And also to avoid Mamubi suicide. And that's another thing I want to talk about um, at, at the, uh, towards or oh, during this conversation. How do we assist? I think them? it's a pressure. It's, the, it's the managing that pressure. That's why I said earlier on, you have a responsibility to make sure that that child of yours is reassured and affirmed. Uh, when I say affirmed, is to say, you say, I know you prepared, but if ever there's an eventuality that, the, uh, I think Tan has raised their hand as well, you, you take it after I've responded here, uh, that if anything happens beyond the exams that is not according to your expectation, it's not the end of the world. You are my child, you embrace that child, you know? So if they know when they go in there to say, you know, boy, I know you've done your best. You are ready. But exams are exams, you know. So should anything beyond what you expected, and it's not that starting with exams. I want to go back to say you need to treat your children as they grow to have room for disappointment. room for disappointment it's very important because sometimes the world does they must understand that the world doesn't revolve around them so sometimes things will not happen as you expect or as everything that you expect so you need to be able to adapt or accept the inevitable My son, the last born, is a, is a rugby player. But when he was a, a, in primary school, he was hoping to be selected a, for, was it border? Was it there? No, well, to represent border, yes. Uh, in the whatever, under, whatever, under uh, 13. But what happened you know rabbi you know there are people you know <laughs> that they, they claim it as their own territory you know so no black child could be seen there i think it's something that we you know we're still working on in in our country now what they did they changed his position and gave it to another boy white boy and put him in a position that is never played for trials I mean, set up for play player. You start a new position and it's selection for selection. So it was deliberate to say, we want to eliminate you, you know. So he played in that position. I said, uh, uh, he played in that position, although he said we should have, we should have just refused. So he played in that position. So this boy who was put there, who was not a good, as good as he was, was selected in this position, you know. And he was not selected because he was playing a position that he's not used to. Yeah. He came back and said, you know, mom, I know I'm good. Because that was his response with him not being selected. He says, I know I'm good. And the reason that I could not perform as expected is because I was playing in selection uh, 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 trials in a position that I've never played in. And they gave my position to so-and-so. You know, so he, this is a 13-year-old saying that, you know. So it means that it's the level of maturity and, and the reassurance that we gave him that sometimes things might not work out the way you expect them. But the following year, he went again and he was selected. In the, so, yeah. So, yeah, so these are the things I'm using just as an example, because when that child fails, you need to accept, but it must not be the end of the world, you must mm -hmm. be able to say, I'm going to rewrite, or I'm going to, you know, do a bridging, uh, you know, uh, exam 
to up my marks because this is I know I can do it. Maybe there might be another, you know, uh, reason or circumstances that resulted in my marks not being so good or me failing. So I'm going to do, I'm not going to kill myself. I'm not going to throw the towel and forget about studies. I'm going to refocus and go back and do even better and excel. And you must be beside that sad child to give that child that reassurance that, boy, girl, you can still do it. You know, mm -hmm. that's the responsibility. I think let's give Tan, uh, Tan the, uh, the opportunity. Yeah. So, yo, Mamubi, thank you so much for that. And I'm hoping that our youngsters get the gist of this particular narrative. The fact that you might not be selected the first time. You might not make it the first time. You might not be the best the first time but that does not define who you are the most important thing is that you need to know who you are and maybe that is where parenting comes in as you grow as a person this tandy we acknowledge your hand and i want to hear your voice and your story um our brothers and sisters would love to see your beautiful face as you engage <laughs> us. And it would be, <laughs> and it would be <laughs> nice for you to is put it, on your camera on. <laughs> is it going to work? Ah, excuse me. This one. <laughs> Let us see you. Let us see I, my I came, I came back at home and then, yo, uh, okay, I will put my <laughs> Shoo. I didn't expect that one. Eh? <laughs> it, it's all right. So you, you can just engage us as as you okay. try to navigate your video. Okay, I what, will. What is your sense about the topic? Oh, um, it's it's a, it's a good topic to to engage on. Um, I I have one son and I'm an aunt to as many kids. Um, I think the key for me is always to be, they must be themselves, they must understand themselves. Uh, and also, especially I'll talk about my, my son, I have one boy, um, he, he has a disability. So in, in life, I've made sure that he loves himself and at school, he does everything like any other ch child uh, as, a, as a normal kid, whether it's sports, whether it's academia and, and everything else. So yes, there are times where things don't go right and he's able to then reset and, and have his goal. So I've tried to make him as independent. So whatever he says, I will reach as a mark. I, I leave him to eat and then he works on it. So I would love parents to give uh, kids the, that assurance that as parents, they are there, but allow the kids to, to go out into the world and, and learn and, and, and experience things when it's painful, be there, when he's happy, be there. Um, the last match he was playing, I went uh, because the school doesn't allow us so, um, I went and, 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 and I was outside the yard, but I could visibly see the, 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 the match that they were playing. So it, 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 it was so great. The performance I've seen, and, and it was because he knew that I was there as well watching. So th that's kind of support that we give to our kids. It's what makes them then to be able to excel as well and, um, and do more than they capable of of doing at times so he even blocked another goal that was supposed to be like a given goal so i've never seen him play that well and uh, that was the first match the school won as well but all, I, all i'm trying to say with the kids whether they're doing metric they should have got that support early and when it comes to metric then you you've got that relationship with the child um set already it's not a new thing anxiety that much but if there is anxiety give the assurance to the to the child and post metric give that support they can do there's quite a lot of things that are there and um and i also encourage my son to do as much research as possible in terms of what 
uh, possibilities are there in future. So he picks up lots of things and have those discussions. Mm -hmm. We need to have time to talk to the kids. Uh, I have a TV, I don't know how many times I switch it on, but that time, whether it's five minutes or 10 minutes, have time and talk to the kids. I, I, I cherish that you, even if they have something they picked up, whether the teacher is not uh, treating them well, then they're comfortable to talk to you about it. And, and you, you can either guide them to do it right or probably get to a stage where you, you engage the teacher. But for me, I always let him to fix things. And if he, he fails, then I, I come in. Yeah, I, I'm, that's my story. And, and uh, I very much love kids, uh, whether they are disabled or, or not. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Andy, for your story. And you have just opened a can of worms. And I am so sorry for you. <laughs> because, because you have mentioned that your son has or is living with a disability. Do you find uh, maybe from your friends or who are parents that the parenting styles are different or the types of parenting are different when a child has a disability versus when a child does not have a disability? Okay, I will talk from a personal perspective and also from a distant perspective. So with yeah. my friends, they, they treat my son as, as like any other kid because he behaves like any other kid. Uh, even I think, Another friend of mine, um, he was like, yo, I forgot can any son is a disability. But it, it, it was a, an issue that he can do anything, whether you say pick up that thing, even though his hand, uh, he doesn't have a, a, the right hand, he will do it. He won't say, ah, I can't, or whatever. He will find a way to do it. So that's mm -hmm. how, we, but then from a distant point of view, how I've seen other parents, they treat, kids with disability very differently and they like hiding them they don't want them to be seen um it's like uh, um i don't know it, it, it's it's like they're embarrassed sometimes to to even be with those kids um but i promise you when you start engaging the love that you get from the kids and when you also integrate that child into uh, either whether it's a game with other kids or, 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 or at school, they, they behave, they, they find a way to blend and you'll find other kids as well. They understand, they know what not to help with, they know what to help with because they've built then a, a specific relationship. And I feel in terms of society, if we can have that opportunity of mixing the kids so that even when we grow and, and they grow, they are older, then it's easy to interact. Um, it, it's like when I went, the first time I went to the office of the premier, I have a disability, maybe let me say that as well. Um, they were like, you're looking for grant. I'm like, no, I'm not looking for disability grant. And I'm a businesswoman. Uh, I've got electrical engineering. So why would I be looking for a disability grant? So, so those are some of the things just by seeing you, then there's an assumption. Okay, let me not make this about me, but uh, I would love parents to teach their kids whether they have a disability or not, like any, like any other normal kid. Sure. Thank you so much. And I, I want to put myself on the cross here because I, I, have, I have many friends with different situations and abilities and disabilities but i have found and i i found this this year that when i see a child with disabilities it it's almost like i go overboard it's almost like i go crazy you know um if i have a friend who is and please accept my apologies for maybe using terms that are not um acceptable so please accept that for me so when i have a child a friend with a child that is is fully able if that's the term versus a friend who's a child that lives with disabilities i feel like i would give like 60 40 you know mm. uh, 40 to the child with with who is fully able but 60 to the child with other, I'm like are you okay uh it's okay no be patient do this so how do we 
stop that? Um, do we have to stop it? How do we stop it prior yeah. to metric? So that by the time they get to metric, and as Umam could have said, that there's nothing special about you. Um, and I think that is the problem that we have with children now, fully able or, or with disabilities, that they maybe they somehow feel like they are special and they should be treated um, with kids' loves or special, they should be given special uh, treatment. So how do we as parents, and like me, I'm an aunt to, 16 nephews and nieces and two grand, I have one <laughs> grand nephew and one grandkid. So yes, I am a grand aunt and I am wow. proud. So how do we deal with, how do we deal with those sorts of um, situations? Okay, um, like recently, Dr. Pumzin Lamunuga uh, mentioned that with disability, it's the same as any other person who's, if for example, you can sing and I can't sing, we both have voices. So it's the same. If uh, you've got legs, I've got legs, you can run, I can run. The, the only thing is how you use what you have, you're using it differently. So when you teach that person very special, then they feel uh, anxiety as well. Um, so it should be the same. If you're saying to them, run, all of them must run. Whether he runs and gets there 10 minutes later or whatever, it doesn't matter. That mm. person has run, that child has run, you'll feel, uh, I know when I was younger, they would put me like 10 steps in front of the whole crew and then we would run. And sometimes I would win and they would be like, no, 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 then you must run with us. So it's, it, it shouldn't be, it should be a, a, a way of, either trialing as, 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 as you, but it don't make it uh, so special that this person, oh, it's like an egg. Oh, no, those uh, people with disabilities can actually do everything on their own. Um, you, uh, they, for example, I will talk about a blind child. They can do their homework, they can clean, make their bed, mm -hmm. wash themselves, dress themselves up. So you don't have to be carrying, do you know where your bag, school bag is? They know exactly. So you leave them to leave, but let allow them to ask for help. Then, then come in. Unless you, you see that they may be shy, you ask, do you want to be helped? Then if they say yes, then you, you, you gladly. But that issue of imposing always causes problems for people with disabilities because then they feel inadequate. So you yeah. better see them struggle if they fall it's fine they're gonna stand up again and try again then you, you yeah. you're treating them to have resilience um yeah. i think when i started in kingdom town as a in the electrical department um they couldn't believe i did the street lights i did the traffic lights i did um cables we dig and we go down into the trench and we work on the cables so and people were like wow i'm like there's nothing Serious, uh, it's, it's, it's work. I'm, I'm doing the same as the other men. Unfortunately for me, I was probably the only woman at that time. So I'm doing the same as other men are doing. And sometimes they struggle and then I help them. Then they would blush because the woman has done, especially a disabled woman has done what they can do as men. So it used to be a wow thing. So allow that child because you might even be doing something best. That's why even on the research, they would show you that people with disabilities at work, they are very, uh, what's the word they use? It's people that are loyal at work and they actually do the best. So if they can do this one thing, they would do perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Sister Andy. Uh, so I, I want to know now, how do we as parents become responsible in assisting our children as they prepare for their metric um, uh, test, you know, or for their metric exams? Because we, we know now, I mean, already tomorrow it is October and mm. we have children who are anxious, who are nervous, children who don't know whether they're good enough or not. Um, you know, another point I wanted to raise was how do single parents assist their children in becoming great, you know, um, towards their metric, metric results? 
So how do we as parents assess our children now in 2021, in, ex in, in October 2021, as they reach for their 2021 metric exam? Okay, for, for me, I think it's, it's about, uh, as you know, your child, it's about ensuring that they are ready, uh, get to understand whether they need uh, extra support, uh, do they need extra material, especially now, even government, uh, they've issued um, uh, some support via uh, sub platforms, I just don't want to use the, but the, 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 there's TV, so you, you guide your child also in terms of what is available, maybe they're not aware of, but, mm. um, and also give them um, assurance at the same time that they are good and also give them time uh, to, to do the study. Because sometimes because of responsibilities, you'll find the child still has to do one, two, three, four, five. Um, make it known to that child that, okay, now, we're gonna allow you to study. So you're giving support to the child, even though you are a single parent. Um, I don't think it, yeah. it's different uh, uh, between a single parent and, and, a, and parents that are married. So it's the same process. You, you just assure your child that you are there for them. You are there to support. You can ask the teacher to help where they need help. Um, there's tutors now. It's easy to get a tutor online. Um, so some of those things, make sure that the child has got data. So put the resources there and, and assure the, the child that everything is gonna be fine. You, you just relax, the, you just get them to relax because I find um, a time because of stress. Also, if you, you see that they're really stressed, take them out to play because it doesn't mean when you're studying, you mustn't play, you mustn't have fun whether they are fun is going to the movies or playing soccer or swimming or whichever that makes them to relax. You will know your child what would make work for them, but do those activities in between as well because it, it refreshes the mind. Um, when you go to the exam, your, your, your spirit, your body, your soul, your mind should be in sync. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you so much. So maybe bringing back uh, Mama Hakula. Mama Hakula, how do parents deal with this very situation when there is a joint custody or a single parenting household? Because we know that sometimes those can play to be oh, to be troublesome um, because it's not all parents who have joint custody who are able to parent children when they're not living to uh, when they're not living with them or living together so how do we now assist our children pre and post metric exams uh, when we are in a joint custody situation or when we are single parents i think for me there isn't much of a difference children they just need love Hmm. that's the foundation whether the parents are one under one roof or not and also you set standards regulate the relationship how they interact with both parents hmm. and that will not actually affect them also the support remember it takes a village to um, raise a child. You just said now that you are an, uh, an aunt to 16 nieces. The same yeah. with me, yes. The same with me. What I did with my, because the girls, my sisters, they've got girls. They're more or less the same age with my boys and uh, with, uh, with my boys. But for all of them, and one of them, they are the uh, mother divorced, you know. The yeah. one thing that gave assurance mm -hmm. those kids is love. We mm -hmm. love them as their own, that standard in our family. And with me, they know I've got certain standards in terms of performance, you know. <laughs> but how I do it with them, I push them such that they are comfortable with that push. Uh -huh. So each one of them, 
I would say beginning of the year, a metric outfit a magas. But what I want, I want results. You know, what I want, results. And I will see the results in the pre-exams. Yeah. Pre-exams, all of them. That's what I did. And I'm not saying they wouldn't have not performed, but that appreciation to say, you know what, you are going to do something special. So I'm going to help you look special. But in return, you must make me happy as well. Yeah. So it's a pressure, but it's a pressure that is very subtle with touch a touch of love. You see? Mm. So there are certain ways kids they want love and reassurance. And they will really amaze you. Sure. The other one you were studied at Nay did accounting at Nelson Mandela. When they were asked to get mentors, he said, Magaz, I can't find another mentor. I've got one at home, so can I put your name down? So they, and she influenced other cousins. I'm actually mm -hmm. mentoring all three of them. The other one was on the program that we're doing for 16 Days of Activism. She was interviewed on SABC Channel Africa. Where I go have an opportunity, I bring her along board. She's very eloquent. She's very confident. So these are the things that as, as nieces, as um, adapts, you know, as aunts, you know, we mm. need to do mm. and support our brothers and sisters and our nieces and nephews. So there, there is no issue of saying this child, there's no, you know, the, the mother is divorced or mm. the father is divorced. It's my brother's mm. son and the mother is not here. Be, be that mother to that boy if uh, the divorce led to the boy being with the, with your brother or to that daughter of your sister or your that son of your sister, you know. It is our responsibility. So, yes, but I'm not saying single parents are not capable, but I'm saying there's more that we can do in the spirit of Ubuntu. In fact, I would say a single parent might be even better positioned because, mm -hmm. yes, your values and principles, nobody will conflict. Yeah. So you set the tone. And if you are able to guide your child, your values will be instilled more better than having two people have maybe who might have different ideas or acting differently. You're trying here as a father or a mother to instill certain values. But the other partner in, te in in the way that he or she behaves contrary to the same values. You see? Sure. So yeah. I don't think a child from, a, 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 you know, a single parent is worse off than a child from, a, mm -hmm. you know, a married, you know, a family. So, yeah. yeah. That's my own view. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mamubi. And I, I, I really wish that as parents, parents could give themselves some, some leeway, you know, to also make mistakes. In as much as we give children an opportunity to make mistakes, uh, as parents, we should also give ourselves some leeway to make mistakes because no two children are the same. So when we make mistakes, how do we rectify that as parents? Maybe you say to your child, no, you must be a doctor because, hey, this is a family of doctors or, you know, you know whatever, that there's a lineage of this particular character um, or, or, or career. And then now your child says, no, I actually want to be an artist. Then you realize you were wrong. Or, or as some <laughs> of us do, your first qualification becomes for your parents. You say, you know what? I'm going to be a doctor for you. And they become doctors. But after that qualification, they say, this one is yours. The next one, I'm going to be an artist and that is mine. <laughs> I've got two friends that have actually closed their surgeries and listed out. Because oh. they did, they, yes, I've got two such friends. Uh, one is just consulting as actually as a socialist. He wants to help people differently, not as a doctor. Mm -hmm. She yeah. built a surgery in Johannesburg, a very big one. So, yeah, but she's now a doctor in paper. She's not practicing. 
and she doesn't sure. want to go there, you know. So it is important that we embrace. Uh, we come from, especially us, we from come from that culture to say, if you you know you are good in maths and science, you must be a doctor. Yeah. You myself, you know, I was engaging with somebody now today during the day, asking me, you know, looking at what I'm doing now, and asking my background. I said, you know what? It's a long story, you know. Then I said, I'm a scientist. <laughs> Because if uh, it, it during our time, even at school, you know, if you are good in science and math, you're forced to be in this great in this particular grade, you know, and they don't look at any other thing. If you are good in figures, figures, you know, they say, okay, you have to do it. Go do BSc, go do medicine, go do pharmacy. You know, they don't look at other things. And when I look at myself, I used to sell in primary school. My pocket money, I would, you know, not just double, grow it fourfold. Oh, wow. Because our dad would give us pocket money, he would come home, he was a teacher, you know, but not teaching where we were. So he'd come yeah. Friday, get the pocket money for the week, you know. So I would buy sweets, I would buy oranges, you know, I would over the weekend, you know, cook your head and feet and sell in the village, you know. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that was a clear indication that this is an entrepreneur. I could, should have gone to commerce, you know. Yeah, but I, because I was good in figures, maths, and science, I ended up doing BSc. Even that BSc, I wanted to do pharmacy and mix my own medicine because I wanted to sell my own medicine, you know. <laughs> so this exciting thing was always in my mind, you know. So, so these are the things, but. The career guidance, they were, they were looking at your performance, you know. Mm. So the mm. IQ was the main thing, you know, but your interests were not looking at. And I think we need to unlearn that for our own children now. You look at what they like most, you know, and help them yeah. to be who they're meant to be because they want to be happy. I've got my niece now. She sings, she's very good with beauty things. She does hair and skincare. She's got honors. She was offered to do mm. masters. She was a cuter at, 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 at varsity. She studied at Nelson Mandela. Now, I say to her, I was asking because, I mean, she, I thought she liked what she was doing because she was doing it. I said, you've been offered to do your master. I said, oh my gosh, hey, hey, I'm done with that. Mm. <laughs> Uh, just, she said, I want to learn. She said, I want to understand the whole value chain. You know, yeah. I'm going yeah. to do a short course in skincare and things like that. She likes, she's making money. She's making lots of yeah. money. She says, on good days, my guys, I make clean a thousand rand daily. She's, she's, she's telling me, what do I say to her? I said, do I say to her, go to, instead of saying, I said to her mother, Give this girl your garage so that she set it up, to help her set it up, you know, into a salon. And she takes the whole thing and everything, you know, and products, sell the products, she gets to understand the skincare products and things like that, you know. This is a child who studied and did a degree, honors. Now she's offered to do masters. She says, no, I'm not going there. She also sings. She says, Namagas, I'm an artist. She sings beautifully. You know, wow. she sings beautifully. So those are the things. When they're in the, there's entertainment during December, you'll find her on stage. Yeah. So these are the things that she liked, but we didn't yeah. know. We say we, you push this child to go and study, but she says no. You come, Mama Leah. Exactly what you're saying. She says no. Says come, Mama. Oh, Mama, again, she wants to cry when she talks. I said no. Says come, Mama. It's a certificate. She could yes, have done I, I gave, I gave you what you wanted. She could have done a diploma as a beautician, you know? Yeah. And do the whole thing. Because she's, even at school, when she was at varsity, she was the go-to person. When people want to do makeup, when they want to do their hair, she was the go-to person. Or maybe, Mam Mam Hakula, she could have been a dermatologist. Yes. Mm. You know, deal with people's skins and, and all of that. But mm. we failed to see, you know, the child for who the child is. Mm. 
yeah so i think we need to 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 to, to do that if yeah. then they can decide themselves for me we can guide them i must honestly yeah. say that because yeah. at the end of the day we want them to be self sufficient right mm. so we need to be able to guide guide them yeah so that they you know so that they don't end up where they you know and 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 reach a dead end and not grow so that is the responsibility of a parent sure. my middle son is a music he, he, he like music he, he used to play piano you know, he still does you know but he was conscious to say my because his a professor was doing teaching him music he said if you go into music you'll die poor <laughs> you know? so that's what he said you know he's pro he, uh, how he's, he's, um, he's this, he was his tutor private tutor our next door neighbor he said hey my boy so he got a lot of sponsors to do he says no 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 i like music i'll do it as a hobby but okay. i'm going to you know i'm going to complete my studies in engineering then yeah. i'll do it as a hobby and he did exactly that but we allowed him to do that you know but now he's professionalizing that very same music you know so he's got two career streams so those are the other things that you can motivate our children you know with reason mm. so if you're saying the what she likes or he likes might not yeah. you know make him or her self sufficient you guide you know but at least yeah. she or he must do something that is comfortable and can live with you know if you are saying our language say something to fall back on you know yeah. so you need to guide our children that way and not force them to do something that they don't like because we want them there we want the you know the tag to say my daughter is a lawyer my son is a doctor and all that it's not about us it's about them helping them beyond metric it means that you give that guidance sometimes they'll go to varsity first year they are trying and they realize, you know what, this is not what I want to do. Allow them to change. Yeah. Because sometimes they're not sure. So when they hit reality adversity, they say, okay, no, this is not where I want to be. Yeah. You know, so allow them to change. Don't say, you know what, I've paid a lot of money. You are not going to change mm -hmm. and all that, you know. Because the worst situation, they will deliberately fail and fail and fail. To prove yeah. that they can't do that thing because they don't want it and waste your money more so we and they would actually offer. eventually hate you they might actually eventually hate you as yeah. a parent and they hate you you know the, these are the things that we need to be open-minded about them we are we've gone beyond our time is going for half past now and no, we stop at half past <laughs> that's why i'm thinking we need to, to draw to a close but thank you so much uh, Mamu B, but I also, you know, in, you know, on that line, I want to read a quote by J. Scott um, Fitzgerald, and he says, for what it is worth, it is never too late to be whoever you want to be. I hope you live a life you are proud of, and if you find you are not, I hope you have the strength to start over again. And with that, I would love to really draw this conversation to a close. And this is a quote that I truly, truly believe in because Mamubi, maybe uh, as, as, as we draw this conversation to a close, when I completed my metric, I wanted to be a psychologist. Or before I completed, I wanted to be a psychologist and it was not to be so after metric i did commercial studies um i did commercial studies. i did not even study accounting or any commerce uh subject but i found myself studying a diploma in commercial administration and after that i my second qualification was office management and training omt um, after that, I well before I even got to that, I entered into the job market and I was a data capturer at the South African Revenue Services. That is when I was introduced to tax, and I got so interested in tax 
And after that particular job, I started specializing in international trade. Um, so for, almost, for over 15 years, I became a specialist in international trade because I now became so intrigued with customs and excise, international trade. And for years and years, I became the guru need I to need I say in that and I left SARS and I joined different um, corporate markets being a specialist in my own right and at the time there were few ladies few women especially black women in the market of international trade um, so I I did wow. that and years later mama as life would have it I, I changed and I said like your friend I said I wanted to to make a difference in the world, but I didn't know how. So I started giving myself into the church and organizations and all of that. And eventually I, I became a part of organizations that actually become a change in society. And, and, and that's where I am today. <laughs> so awesome. I am a true believer that what you want to be in the beginning might not be what you end up being. You know, uh, be the person that you are proud of at the end of the day. If you want to be a doctor today, be a doctor today. But if tomorrow it changes and you want to be an engineer, you know what? Be an engineer. And to all of the parents out there, I think what our kids require is exactly what Mom Hakul has said. And that's what you said. You said we need to invoke trust between yourselves or ourselves and our children. We need to inspire confidence you know, between ourselves. We need to give equal responsibility. And this is a thorn in many children's lives that we give girls more responsibility than we give to boys. So you have said, Mama Hakula, that we need to give equal responsibility. And you also said we need to give moral support. You know, we need to also realize the definition of what morality is. If we can go back to that, it would make our lives so much easier, not only as parents, but also as society, what morality is, get back to that. You also said we need to motivate, uh, you need to, yeah, we need to motivate, we need to affirm, and we need to reassure. I loved that. I love that. You motivate your kids, you affirm who they are, and you reassure them that it doesn't matter who you become. I will always be there as your parent. And that is the best. You know, it's unlike when your parent says, no, you're going to be an engineer or nothing. There is no reassurance. And that is why children sometimes succumb to suicide because they feel like if I become who, the person that I'm supposed to be, I will never be good enough for my parents. And finally, you said, Mama Hakula, we need to create room for disappointment. Hey, none of us is special. Absolutely none of us is special. We are going to fail and fail and fail. But even through our failure, we are not our failure. We are just failing in that particular journey. But we are journeying and failure becomes part of the journey. Thank you so much, Mamupi. Thanks to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to give you one minute to say goodbye and give our parting shot to this conversation. I love this conversation. I really, really do. Uh, and before, before I give back to you, I love this conversation, but I also must say that I am that tough and Makazi, and that Makazi who's very tough when it comes to performance. And sometimes it's a good thing, and sometimes it's, it's not such a good thing. But maybe I am tough because I've seen how the lack of ambition and, and confidence and responsibility and support um, can be detrimental to the life of many children. But hey, I try, it's trial and error as it is, I presume, for many parents out there. Thanks, thank you very much. Uh, I only want to say um, we need to uh, instill hope for the future in our children. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they must understand that possibilities are unlimited. Today might not be good, but there's future for tomorrow, and tomorrow yeah. might be even better. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. Oh, 
Thank you so much. And for friends, everyone who had joined us today, I want to say to everybody that we all have a responsibility pre and post metric for all of our children. We know how our children kill themselves during this time because they really don't know what the future holds. Well, none of us do, but it's our responsibility to give them hope for the future and say to them, hey, we are here and we will hold your hand as you journey through this thing called life. Friends, see you next week, God willing. So let us close our eyes and pray. We are so eternally grateful as we enter into the exam period. I bring all of the children who are in metric, especially to the foot of your throne, Lord, to give them hope, to give them a life, to say to them, it doesn't matter what the results are like. The future is brighter than what today looks like. And friends, I bring all of the parents Parents, I know that we have plans for our children, but I pray that for all of the parents would let go and let God, you know, be the guide for their children's future. And all of they have to be, all that they have to be is to be a supporting structure for their children, to be a net that when my child falls, I shall be at the bottom and be ready to hold them. Friends, I pray that all of the matriculants who are not sure of what they want to become and to be, that they know that what they want to be today might not be what they want to be tomorrow. And that, hey, at the end of the day, they become who they are proud to be. I pray all of this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Friends, good night Thank and good night. Too. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone.